Hey, should be back. Sorry about that, people. That was uh, eh, technical issues. Hard display crash. All right, welcome, welcome. Um, we are streaming again, so if people could refresh in uh, chat, that would be lovely. I apologize unreservedly. See, like the moment where uh, you know Rum had the three. Um, what's up, Orb Weaver? Where um, where you had that moment there? Um, that the, the tavern was so thrown off that basically they just crashed the computer. Like that was just they couldn't, you know, they couldn't handle it. So that was basically how that went down. Uh, <laughs> the computer had a world event. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, uh, manage participants, chat. Good. All right, there we go. All right. Um, let's see. I have everybody but nonstop back. Uh, so I need to get nonstop back. Yep, we're back. Fresh stream is back. Hey. All right. So we just hey. need to get nonstop back, and then I will uh, I will recapture again. Again, my apologies. It happens sometimes. Okay. All right. I see what I suspect is uh, nonstop. Okay, so actually I just have to adjust two cameras and we'll be good to go again, I think. Uh, so just bear with me. I won't turn off my camera, I promise. Yes, yeah, I was say, don't do that. I think that was what that was really what happened here, actually. Uh, it just took a very long time for my computer to finally break. But once <laughs> once you did that, the computer's like, look, this is this cannot stand. Thank you for the host, Darksaber. Unlike my character, who can handle the pressure, your computer cannot. My computer cannot handle the pressure. That that is true facts, right there. I was gonna I was gonna say um, while you're gone, I did discover that if you want push to talk in this, it's Alt A. Oh, so it does exist. That. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. All right, good. That was the real reason that I did all this. It was just so you could discover that information. That was really my my cunning plan. Uh, all right. So, let's just get, not that. Um, all right, hang on a second here. There's that, and then last thing is the dice roller. There's the dice roller. Lovely. All right. There we are. Okay. We're back. I apologize unreservedly. Where were we? Uh, let's see. When we last left our heroes, <laughs> I believe what actually happened was um, that they were in the midst of talking to you, Rum, about uh, convincing you. And they so everyone is looking at you, Rum. And uh, they say, including presumably your companions. And uh, so they look at you and they're like, they, they kind of are waiting expectedly. And um, one of the uh, halflings, uh, the one in back, Tyne, says, oh, give, us, give us a song then, Rum. Give us a song and entertain, and we will tumble for you. And, I cheer um, out loudly in encouragement. Okay, <laughs> right. And so Tane jumps up on Tyne's shoulders, and Tawn jumps up on Tane's shoulders immediately. And they start walking around, uh, you know, the inn like this, sort of around this way. And the patrons laugh, and they sort of jump up and down and kind of balance off each other and jump on the tables and everything. Um, and uh, there's just sort of a general kind of, you know, hubbub. Uh, and then they all stop and look back at you again, Rum, and they're just like, uh, all right, well, um, it, it's your turn, Rum. Don't disappoint the people now. Um, I'm going to look at them and <laughs> I will bluntly say no and walk <laughs> off with my ale. Okay. So at you... which point I will start singing then so they tumble. Okay, so you start doing that. Um, you you don't have to tell me what exact how you sing it, but I mean, like you got a particular kind of song you're looking at, like like. I was gonna do a just like a children's nursery rhyme, like London Bridge falling down. Okay. Toppling. 
rolling type of thing. Sounds good. Uh, you do that. Um, and although the people are terribly disappointed um, at uh, losing out on the possibility of uh, actual great stuff from uh, rum, instead what they end up doing is uh, they go back into their uh, discussion. Uh, the music begins again. Um, and uh, the inn starts to settle back down as the uh, tumblers uh, jump back down as well. Now, uh, while this is going on, um, Jess and Lucian, uh, well, actually, first of all, Rum, you're walking where with this ale? Like, once you've walked away? Walking back towards the uh, human dwarf. Okay. And towards that corner again. Okay. Um, Okay, so you head back over to the corner. Now let me jump over to Jess and Lucian. Uh, you all saw what just transpired. Um, you see Rum walking back towards the corner. Uh, what about, uh, what are we dealing with with you guys? What are you guys going to try to do? Did I actually see? I'm pretty sure I was still under the table. That's true. You didn't, that's true. You just heard hubbub. Yeah, that's a good point. You, you just heard hubbub. That's a good point. I think at this point I'm waiting for Jess to get out of the table before we start moving around again. Yeah, and so Jess comp contemplates the whole morality of taking whatever is in the pouch and she outweighs it with her ideals she's like this person wants to get a lifestyle just wants to be able to meet with their relatives and so she's buying the story that this uh dragonborn is doing and then she's like fine i won't take it and then she crawls um out underneath the paladin as well okay um in in an attempt not to be seen, I assume, as you're doing this, right? Is that is that fair to say yeah. still? Okay. So go ahead and make another stealth check as you were departing the area or the immediate area. Non stop. <laughs> well am I rolling? Uh plus five. Uh, nine. Whoops. <laughs> so um so you kind of scramble out, and there's kind of a loud, like, bump. Um, like, uh, fortunately, though, um, the dragonborn lady seems to be otherwise occupied, um, kind of nervously looking up at you. Uh, Lucian, what are you... So you're waiting for, for Jess to come out, basically. When uh, Jess does so, and stands up back behind you, I assume, um, not most graceful time you've ever seen from Jess, but um, what uh, then do you want to do, Lucian? Uh, well, I'm gonna tell the lady that uh, I uh, I need I need to uh, inquire others, uh, and if you, if she ever needs help, just ask for a Lucian Winters. The entire town knows who I am, um, and uh, I'll leave her to her privacy. And she says, uh, "Thank you, thank you. I I appreciate that. And um, well, may may the light bless you." Um, and she goes back to kind of nervously picking at her food. Um, and, uh, and you notice that as you are walking away from the table, she kind of gives you this odd look and you can see that actually, um, she's kind of looking down at probably Jess, who's kind of like waving at her and she's like, what? Like there's something that doesn't quite kind of fit, um, in her description. Okay. So now Taryn, uh, when last we heard from you, you were getting up and going somewhere. Then I'm going to want to ask Russ, uh, Jess and Lucian, and then I'm going to ask Rum, uh, where, where they're up next. So Taryn, where are you headed next now that you've left behind the incredibly fascinating, um, Esma and Eve? I will go disrupt the lady's favorite food critic. Okay. The half elf male. All right, and so you, as you walk over to the table, um, you can see he's kind of like, you know, muttering to himself occasionally, and you can see that he uh, has this, you know, he has a plate of food below him, and uh, he will take a little taste, and then, you know, there's some safflower oil, and he's like, you know, scribbling furiously in his book. I will sit down across from him and say, so it's true then. You are the famous food critic. And he looks up, like, clearly shocked. Like, this is not the way anyone's ever introduced themselves to him. He's like, well, it, well, yeah, well yes, I, I suppose I am. Uh, I, I'm glad to hear that you know of me, um, though I'm not certain how. I don't recognize your face, Mr. Uh... Well, I am Terran from Neverwinter. 
we'll go with Boulder's Gate from Boulder's Gate and why your review of the inns in this town is what prompted me to voyage to Flan to it's... test to experience the delights myself and he uh he kind of like looks back and he says oh really well I'm pleased to believe that well then if you know something uh a little bit about me perhaps you'll know the importance of the question I'm about to ask you and he leans forward and he says safflower oil and just stares at you it should in my opinion should not be used in cooking at all exactly right this cook used far too much of this safflower oil look at this nonsense and points down at his plate and you can see that uh it's been sort of bit like different pieces like little little bites and stuff yeah exactly dark side rob what's up to kanjia what's up oregon the trip advisor reviews are fantastic exactly um he's like uh, looking this is like far too much it's such a thing as far too pungent to use in these quantities. If you're going to use it at all, it has to be used sparingly. Completely, completely sparingly. Safflower oil is the kind of thing that must be used in just a soupçon. Just a just a taste, perhaps. Um, make a uh, make an intelligence check for me, please, Taryn. Actually, if you have nature, I'll take that too. But if not, then just intelligence. Wow, nothing but 19s Yeah, tonight. a lot of 19s. Um, so you know that safflowers, locally anyway, grow only within the Quivering Forest, which is that forest that you can see right to the north of Flan that's mentioned on the map. So you know that this is the kind of thing that the cook probably, you know, went up to the forest perhaps to get, but that's the only place that he would have gotten it from. So maybe you're talking about an elf or the cook is an elf or you're not 100 percent sure but the quivering forest is also somewhat dangerous and so obviously the cook went out of his way to get this um and he says the reality is this could you ever imagine having such a terrible meal as this one now tell me truthfully well <clears throat> i do not have nearly the refined palate as one as yourself but I found it rather enjoyable. Actually, I look a little crestfallen and... He also looks crestfallen. He's like, oh, well, yes, I suppose there are other tastes. And he scribbles a couple of notes uh, in his notebook. You can't actually see what he's scribbling. But um, he then closes the notebook with a slap and says, well... Certainly, this has been a most enjoyable conversation, my friend, but um, unfortunately, I must return to my duty, such as it is. I'm waiting for my second course, which perhaps can be not as buried in spice as this one was. We'll see what happens, or if they understand what it means to have food, or if that is simply an alternative to drink in this rustic environment. He looks kind of around, sniffs. I was just looking to see if I had any sort of skill to... Okay, as I stand up and prepare to leave, I'm going to... I'm going to trip. I'm going to stumble into him, and in writing myself, I am going to pat him down. Okay. All right, this is interesting. So um, so you stand up and then you trip. Let's have you make a dexterity check for me. Let's see how much you're able to pat him down or do any such thing. Let's see how that works. Is this when the 19s run out, I wonder? Yes. Yep, <laughs> that's when they <laughs> run out. So, so you essentially are like, oh, and you like pitch forward across the table, and then you have one of those moments where you like try to grab on, and you're like, it's the cartoon where the cat is sinking down the curtains, like, like all the way down to the table, um, and then finally, like your face finally ends up in his plate. So just, um, and there's just a moment of silence, and then he's just like. Would you get your idiot 
idiotic person out of my safflower oil-ridden food, please? I will stand up and say, yes, there is just a touch too much saffron oil in there, safflower oil. Yeah, your, your face is now safflower oil. And um, so you kind of back away and he just looks at you, just sort of the, if you've ever seen the Blues Brothers, like the nun at the top of the stairs, just shaking his head just over and over and over again as you back farther and farther away. Um, Taryn, where are you headed next? What's up, Echo? And then I'm going to jump back to uh, Rum to see what he's doing. Oh, no, I said Lucien and Jess, and then I'll jump back to Rum. I will go sit dejectedly by the <laughs> female wood elf. Okay, sounds good. You're going to head over that way. Uh, let's see, Lucien and Jess, where are you guys going now that you've left behind the dragonborn woman? So it seems like there's like only two tables left to interrogate. Basically, yeah, there's the um, the woman that uh, looks like Terran might be making his way towards. Um, thank you for the host, Outstar. And uh, then you've got the... Um, well, you've got the... Uh, yeah, actually, there's no... There's only... There's the elf, and then there's the older human man and dwarven woman. No one is actually, like... Rum has been over there a couple times, but actually hasn't, you know, started chatting with them. He's just kind of walked by and observed them. So, theoretically, that's still... Un unexplored i guess you could say i think i think i'll like to head toward the uh the two guys and the and the lady towards that what do you mean the one guy and the lady it's one man and dwarven woman is that what you're talking about yeah okay okay so you guys head over that way rum you were in the corner so you're actually able to observe this also so i can bring both of you in on this um and uh as you come up now how are you guys doing this first of all are you redoing your little your little thing that you did the last time jess uh and lucian of Hiding behind, etc. Uh, will that get me closer to this table? Oh, okay. I mean, it could. It's it's in the farthest distance of that row, so uh, you could definitely get me. It might get you a little closer. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I want to do that. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, give me one second here. Just want to make sure that this. Okay, good. Uh, I think I learned from my mistakes of what I did bad, and so I'm going to try to kind of okay. follow a little bit more around his leg. And and Lucy, kind of, you're doing the same thing, Lucy, and you're standing in front. You're also walking up like you did the last time and just... Yep. Okay. So let's have you make a stealth check again for me, Jess. Plus five. <laughs> all right, which means nonstop. Make that check for me. <laughs> Why don't you have your 20-sided with you at all times, Jay? I'm really... And I know, I you considered know? it, and I was like, I should bring this. I'm like, no, I'm not going to have know. a use it. A 10, huh? So, um... So, rolls are horrible. so you, you kind of, like, scramble forward this time, but as you're scrambling forward, this table is apparently uh, not the same design, so there's an extra leg of the table. So as you're going <laughs> forward, you're just like, poosh, like this. So the table rocks back and forth, and the man who's sitting on the steed is like, oh, what the hell? Um, and he kind of looks around quickly, and um, then he kind of puts his hand, and uh, Rum, I want you to make a perception check for me, please, because you're watching this take place. Ow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're just like, now wait, you, you only, really, only a three? You don't have any, like, that's all you got for perception? Uh, I don't have the wisdom. So you don't have any wisdom. You don't have wisdom bonus. Oh, yeah, I do have plus three to wisdom. Sorry. Okay, still not going to help with that roll. But uh, so you you so you saw the table move back and forth, but you just yeah. saw, you heard the human like ah what what the hell's um and looking yeah. around and then stares up at you, Lucian, who's like the proximate cause. Like he doesn't actually see Jess yet, um, <laughs> but he looks up at you, Lucian, is like, what what the hell's the matter with you? Can I uh? put my hand on the table at the same time that, that that just got bumped into the leg you can try but you're not going to be able to stop it in time i mean it's going to rock you can immediately like slow you could stop it it's not like it rocks back like it's going to fall over but you won't be able to stop it from having been bumped um but you I'm, can I, I don't mind slowing it okay so you yeah. do that um and he, and the man says what are you doing here this is a private conversation uh excuse me uh ladies and gentlemen if I can have a moment of your time. Let me stare up at you. Jess, what are you doing while this is going on? 
have they still not noticed me? Yes, they think... because they think that he did it. So they're still <laughs> looking up at him. Yes. Is there any way I can get around this particular leg? Oh yeah, like... you can. You can give it another shot. I mean, you tell me. Let's let's find out. <laughs> is there? A ring? Is my ring going at all? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Um. So yeah, I'm definitely going to try to k turn my body into like between the leg and like with uh, between the wooden leg and the human leg and the dwarf leg, and kind of try to like maneuver stepping into it. This sounds it. very complicated. Let's see how it works. Let's let's find <laughs> out together. Is that a stealth or? That's a stealth. Yeah. Okay. Plus five again. <laughs> so one, once again, nonstop. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nonstop, for doing this for me, by the way. And allow me to take part in this awesome thing. Okay. So you were able to um, sort of zip through in the way that you've just described. Um, and you are now under the side. And you can actually see a kind of large um, pack. I mentioned this to Rum, but you weren't there for that. So uh, a pack that you actually see sitting by the human side on the, uh, on the, the bench next to him. With the ring, I'm going to kind of move my hand away from the bag, towards the bag. I'm trying to put it in different areas around the table and see if it glows any brighter. It's not really, well, it's not easy to tell except that the magic is definitely centered somewhere around the human. Like, it seems to be not necessarily the dwarf, but definitely the human somewhere. So while you're thinking about that, Lucy, let me go back to up to you. What are you doing? Um, what are you saying while this is happening? Um... Let's see, if I had a moment of your time. Right. I was wondering if you guys have uh, seen or heard uh, anything about a magical artifact. One of the um, the illegal kind, possibly, and, possibly disturbing the magical plane. And so when you say that, the, the guy's eyes widen. He says... I don't know what you mean. And his hand whips down. Now, Jess, I need to know what you were trying to do at the moment. Like, what was the thing you did after what I just described? Or what we just talked about? So you did the thing with the ring and whatever. Like, what did you do right after that? I was wanting to go for the bag. I thought so. So he <laughs> immediately puts his hand down. You put his hand, you put your hand too. Let's see. Um, this is going to be, oh gosh. Light of hand? This would be a dick. Yes, sleight of hand. Yep. So be sleight of hand. Uh, plus five again. <laughs> so plus five. <laughs> okay. So you grab the bag at the same time that the guy grabs the bag. But the problem is that even though you grab it first, you've got that damn leg that's in the way. So as both of you grab it, the human kind of grabs it along with you. And the bag ends up sort of between the two of you smashing against the inside leg of the table and the sound of glass shattering echoes throughout the room and the human then and you have a first row front row seat both lucian and jess screams as his body is surrounded by a blue crackling energy he falls to the floor backwards off the bench like -dump. there is some kind of dagger-like object jess that you can see that's clutched in his hand and at the same time Rum and um, uh, Lucian, you notice that the dwarf pushes back her chair and runs for the door. Okay. Is the door open? Uh, not yet. So it is It is a closed door right now? It is a closed door at the moment, yes. Okay, how far away is it from me? Um, uh, a little bit farther from you than it is from her. Um, you know, it's maybe... I don't know how big the room would be. Maybe maybe she's like 50 feet away and you're maybe 65, 70, something like that, um, okay. where you basically are. So, so yeah, so you can tell me what you want to do. I'll take what Lucian wants to do and uh, Taryn will find out about you. And also, like, I basically want to know what all of you guys want to do. I may put this into initiative in a minute, but I want to see, first of all, what you guys are doing. So rum first, since I was talking to you already. So she's running towards the door right now, panicking or more of a can't tell, can't tell, can't, can't tell because her expression is not to her face is not towards you. She can't. got up and was like, "I'm out." Like you know that for sure, but after that, you don't know. 
Um, okay. And meanwhile, the guy is just continuing like, oh, bzzz, like as this li this lightning continues, energy, whatever it is, electricity continues to zap around him. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to pursue. Okay. And cast and use my cantrip thom to boom my voice towards her to get her to stop. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back to that. Um, we'll have you do that. Uh, Lucian, Taryn, Jess, what are you guys doing? Uh, Lu Taryn, you saw all you heard. You didn't see the guy with the object. All you heard was this shattering and then a scream. And now if you look over, you see that there's a guy convulsing with energy over him. And you see this dwarf booking it for the door. And it looks like Rum may or may not, you can't tell because this is all happening simultaneously, be turning to move in her direction. So with that, what are you going to do? And I'm going to ask Lucien and Jess. I am going to attempt to slide in front of the dwarf, get between the dwarf and the door, okay. and just open my arms and say, I got a big safflower kiss for you, baby. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, that sounds good. Uh, Jess and Lucian, what about you guys? So, the the human convulsing? Yes. And the dwarf is fleeing? And it, right. And there wasn't the third patron there, was there? Uh, no, there's just two. There was just the, oh. dwar the human dwarf and the uh, dwarven woman that were conversing. And again, this oh. happened after that smashing sound. Was uh, the dagger pulled out of the bag? Uh, that's not clear. Um, in fact, you don't, it's not clear and you don't know yet. The Something weird, it's a dagger-like object, Jess, but unless you get closer to it, you're, gonna, you're not going to know for sure because it doesn't look exactly like a dagger. There's some strange curve or something to it. Well, I'd want to, like, knock it out of his hand. Okay. Lucian, what about you? Um, was the dwarf closer to me, or...? or... Mm, the, yes, the dwarf would be fairly close to you, yes. So, I suppose I would attempt to try to turn around and grab the dwarf and yell stop in the name of the law <laughs> okay stop in the name of the law i serve the flaming fist okay um and uh so you're gonna do that so basically three of you are going after the dwarf and jess is gonna check after the after the guy as i understand it um so we're going to uh let me start by talking with lucian then and have you try to make that check because you are closest to her so we'll see if that does anything I need you to try to make a strength check here to see whether you can actually grab and restrain this person. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, so you, as she's running, like, and again, this is all happened simultaneous. So Taryn is about to jump up in front of her. Rum is about to turn. But as she's running, like, Lucian moves faster than everybody. Is just like, and grabs her. Um, and she's like, Oh, let me go! Let me go, you long shanks! I said let me go, I mean it! <laughs> well, excuse me, ma'am. But it seems like you were running away from something. You're right, I'm running away from something. Look at what's happening to him. Are you daft? Now, what's happening uh, is, of course, what Jess is looking at. Uh, so I'll come back to what you want to do, Lucian, and Taryn and Ron in a second. Jess, um, so you're going over to check this thing. Um, so the lightning is basically around him. And as you're looking at the human, now that you're close by, you can see that he's holding a long dagger-like tooth of some kind. It looks like it's and a long tooth. Now? <laughs> I'm sorry? I'm holding the bag. Uh, no. Well, sort well... I suppose so. Um, both of you grab the bag and it's smashed against the leg. If you you could theoretically hold on to the bag still, or you could just you know like be have it let go. It's up to you. I was, I still want the bag. It's okay. like I'm holding on to the bag just out of this is Jess. She's not going to grab something gotcha. to take. Pretty big something. bag, by the way. Just so you know, pretty big bag, not a pouch. So okay. that's fine. But I'm just letting you know. Um, okay. So you can do that. Um, so yes, it's some kind of strange tooth of some kind. Jess is going to kind of look over him and be like, that might be the artifact we need. 
I, she takes the bag and tries to put it over her hand to grab the dagger with the bag and rip it out of his hand. Okay. Make a, a strength check for me, please. Um, that we will have to look. What is this has like strength, strength, please? Plus what? Um. Uh, Uh, it's uh just it's just raw strength. Yes. Uh, just a um, no plus, just a raw uh, j- normal d twenty. Okay. Okay. So uh, two things happen. First of all, um, when you try to pry it loose, um, you uh, are unable to do so because the guy is almost convulsively gripping this thing. Secondly, you are zapped. Um, and specifically, you were zapped to the tune of... Hey, what's up, Darth Jazz Hands? What's going on, man? One million damage. No, um, let's see. You are... Yeah, you only take, uh, a single point of damage. Um, you are definitely shocked, um, by this, so to speak. Um, so as you're sort of sitting there looking at this energy convulsing... Uh, One thing that's for sure, though, is that uh, the tooth was warm to the touch when you tried to pull it off, even even through the sack. The tooth was warm to the touch, and you notice that the crackling of the lightning seems to be rhythmic, and that the pulsing of the tooth is happening in the same rhythm. So basically, the the sort of like bzzz, bzzz, bzzz type of thing. Um, And it's zapping, the tooth is sort of pulsing at the same rhythm at the same rhythm as the crackling of the lightning. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Um, Please. So yeah, you want I'm sorry, go ahead. So you want to yell that out? Yes. Think here. I think the thing that we are searching for is not in that woman's possession. All right, Taryn and Rum, you still have not acted other than what you were going to plan to do, so you now have an opportunity to uh, act based on that information if you want. After this, I am going to jump to initiative, but Taryn and Rum, you have a chance to act here. Lucian has got this dwarf restrained. Um, Jess just got zapped and just yelled this thing out about how this is the artifact. So, Taryn and Rum, you're here. Uh, How far away am I from uh, the person that's being zapped or whatever right now? Ten feet probably, maybe less. Um... Do I see um, Jess being zapped? Yes. You see it arc and you see Jess like, ah, like like pulled, I assume, unless Jess is like, yes, more energy. Uh, and I assume Jess doesn't do that. So I'm going to guess. That, right. No. I'm going to guess she pulls her hand back. How big is the dagger? It is a or large is. tooth. Um, large tooth? A long dagger-like tooth. Yeah, it's pretty large. Um, yeah. And is the arc, or is the electricity flowing from with it? That you would need to get a little closer to see. Um, and uh, you can actually, uh, if you wish, um, if you if you are willing, if you do want to do that, you can get a little closer, and then you can make a nature check for me, and see if you can get more information about that thing. Yeah, unlimited um, power, exactly. <laughs> no, what I will do because I saw the zap occur. Right. I will take my hand axe out. Okay. And I'll do a range attack towards the dagger, or towards the tooth itself to knock it out of its hands. Okay. All right. So a called shot. All right. Um, given the circumstances, I'll let you make this attack, but it's going to be at a negative three because you're having to do this with the person on the ground convulsing and also not destroy Jess. So this is this is no joke um, as a throw. So I'm going to say negative three, but I'll let you make the attack. Sure. And I will... Sing him a song. Oh, you want to inspire? The throwing axes, yes, I will inspire. I will inspire you to do this. Inspiration! Okay. All right. Was that... Oh, so add to it whatever Terran... What is it? 1d4? 1d6. A 1d6. So add another 6... Or add another 1d6 to that, please, Raider. By which I mean run. All right, so we're looking at a 14. Um, you're not sure exactly... Okay, so what this this is the throw that you were doing. I'm sorry. 
Um, okay, so when this actually impacts um, the tooth, uh, you notice that the um, the tooth is knocked to the ground, but the lightning simultaneously leaps from the man. So it's like crackle, 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 crackle. Um, the man now lies with his eyes closed. There's a faint burn smell emanating from him. And the lightning zaps over to the food critic who starts convulsing, ah! like, and you know, lightning starts to shoot over him and um, starts to pulsate with him. Now I would like us all to roll initiative, please. So uh, you should be able to find, it's usually just a straight dexterity check. Some of you have bonuses to initiative beyond your normal dexterity. It'll say that on the sheet, but if not just dexterity is what we're talking about. Okay. Stump has got a 20. Um, Holy moly. Lucian, <laughs> Lucian is like, what unholy nonsense is this with the two? Um, Lucian will be, it'll be a while. Um, who have we got that, that was a 16? Who rolled the 16? That was me. Okay. So, Rum's got a 16. What is Jess's? Uh, plus three. Plus three. Damn. Bad, 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 or good? Oh, also a twenty. Wow. So this, so he did it for other people, but not for himself. Um, <laughs> so uh, Jess, I'm going to guess that you are. What is your dexterity score? Plus three. Okay, and uh, but what's just the raw score though? Uh, plus three would be. Just what's like the basic? What's the overall number? It's 16 or 17 for a plus three. Right. Uh, 17. 17, okay. Stump? What do you have? 16. You have 16, okay. That's what I figured, but I was just checking. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're going to go with uh, Jess. You were first to act. So um, you just saw the lightning zap. Now the tooth continues to lie on the, uh, continues to lie on the ground. Um, and now, as I said, the uh, lightning is uh, zapping... Uh, over and over again uh, is zapping uh, the food critic over and over again. Um, I want to try to put the the dagger in the bag without touching it. Can I just easily just put the dagger in the bag? Uh, yes. Do you want to try to, you said without touching it, you want to be able to do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're able to do that. Um, with the edge of the sack, you can kind of pick it up. It doesn't, it's still warm to the touch, but it doesn't zap you this time. And anything, nothing happens? Nope. There's some broken glass, uh, in the bag for sure, but nothing happens otherwise. Okay, can I, uh, hold my turn? Sure, yes, um, but for what specifically? Like, what do you want to, what are you thinking of doing? Um, you can give me an if-then statement, you know, like, if this happens, I will then do this, or I will hold until this occurs, but. I... If we have... <laughs> If the lightning becomes a physical entity to attack the lightning. <laughs> okay, so attack the lightning if things go way south. All right, uh, I will I will keep that in mind. Okay, I attack the darkness. In this case, I attack the lightning. Okay, uh, that sounds good. Um, Stump, you're up next. Oh, sorry. By which I mean actually Taryn. I called you by your Twitch name. My bad. So Taryn. Okay, I am going to do a tackle. And by tackle, I mean like a dance move. I'm going to grab up the the half elf, and I'm going to throw him and attempt to get him away from the lightning. Okay, so you're going to try to grab him and do that. All right. Um, so let's see. Uh, you uh, let's see. Okay, go ahead and make a. Let's see, that's the thing that. 
Make a strength check for me, please. I'm just a normal rogue. I just steal things. <laughs> what is this combat we speak of? Okay, so you grab him, um, and you are you successfully grab him. Now you're trying to knock him away or pull him somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you do this, and you try to knock him to the ground. As you do this, you are zapped for four points of damage. <laughs> like as you're touching him, that hurts a lot. Um, and you try to knock him basically to the ground. He hits the ground heavily um, and lies still for a minute. We'll see what sort of the impact of that is. The lightning though is still on him. The lightning goes with him, not with the space apparently. So he's the one who has the energy on him. Um, okay, that leads us to, oh, there's Digital DM with the host, thank you man. That leads us to Rum, what are you gonna do? There's some serious business going down here, Rum. Yes. Um, okay. Um, the one, the human uh, that originally had the tooth is now on the ground and seems to be like smoke coming out of his area. Um, does he look dead from afar? Yes, although you would need to come closer um, to, you know, like need to examine him to be sure, but he okay. certainly doesn't look, look, look alive. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I see, I see, um, I see the, uh, incident, uh, occur, um, sorry, I can't remember your name. Uh, you get zapped there. Jess, you mean? Um, yeah, so I will, uh, cast, uh, Cure Wounds from, like, come up towards him and cast Cure Wounds on him. Okay. Go ahead and roll that. Let's see what you do. Second. Oh, wow. Max All right. <laughs> so, Jess, you feel hale and hearty. You're like, this is, you know, just refreshing. It's like a, a spa visit. You know, it was fine. It was no... Was he targeting, or was he targeting the other um, guy Tar that he tackled? Targeting you, I think, right? Wasn't he tar weren't you targeting Jess? The Robert? one that, ju yeah, the one that just got zapped, yes. Oh, the, right, The your, but your companion that just got zapped. Yes, my oh, companion, yes, right, okay. yeah. Yep, yep, that's Jess. Uh, or wait, or well, do you mean that or you mean Terran? Because Terran also got zapped. Terran was the bard who just tried to like tackle the guy and bring him to the ground. That's yes. That yes. guy. Okay, so yes. not you, Jess. So Terran, you are restored to full health. Well, thank you kindly. All right. Um, okay, run. And are you going to stay where you are, or are you going to like take steps forward or stay? You know, where? What do you want to do? Um, can I go into prep uh, mode uh, with my warhammer and shield out? kind of like protect myself you can try to do that although it won't have any real mechanical effect because you'd have to defend yourself otherwise but you right. could certainly say that you're going to do that sure yeah i'm basically to basically put myself in a position where i'm attentive but with my ham my hammer and my shield out okay sounds good lucian you have still got this struggling dwarf um what do you want to do um i want to shout out to the patrons in the bar to uh vacate the area okay and warn the lord's alliance that there's a possible uh illegal artifact okay um so uh so so basically to yell that out now when you say lord's alliance the guy that was talking to you was from the emerald enclave do you mean lord's alliance well i'm from the lord's alliance. okay you were right i just want to make sure that's fine i just want to make sure that that's what you're doing you're like again serving the flaming fist so to speak okay <laughs> that's fine um, so, okay, so you yell that out. A lot of people seem to be already kind of making their way out anyway, so they seem to be complying. Um, and, uh, so you sort of yell that out to them and yell out about this thing about the illegal artifact. Um, the dwarf is still struggling as you're saying all this. Um, I'm going to, uh, whisper into her ear and say, I am sorry about this, miss, and I attempt to knock her unconscious 
Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, strength check. Uh, no, actually make a regular attack for me, please. Just a regular attack, but not with a weapon or anything like that. Okay. Pow! You know, and she falls over. Um, you, you know, suspend her, like, you know, hold her, uh, but she slumps in your arms, basically. Do, do I use the, uh, to hit from the weapon? That's all? Uh, no, this is just a basic strength. There's just a basic melee attack that does not use the strength from the weapon. Oh, then it's just too less. It, it's too less. That's fine. Even a 19 is fine. So you knock her out. She's kind of suspended, standing there, and as you're holding her, suddenly and quite, su and quite suddenly, I think I said suddenly twice, run, uh, rum right next to you, Although it looked like the human was dead, the human suddenly stands up, rises to his feet. He's alive, but moving. Walks, eyes closed, toward the door. Leaves the building, stops in the middle of the street, and stands as if he's waiting. So he just walks out the door. Bzz, 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 as he's going. So, can I do my movement then? Uh, yeah, but you're not going to have a lot of movement. Um, not a lot of movement, uh, to be able to do that with, because you've got the dwarf that you're struggling with. Yeah, I'm, pl I'm planning to drop the dwarf and... Oh, actually, wait, not struggling anymore, I'm sorry. She's, right, she's unconscious. Yes, you can drop her if you wish. Yeah, I mean, I'm dropping her. You just, like, I assume somewhat gently, not, like, chucking her <laughs> over your shoulder. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. I'm not, I'm, I'm not carrying her with me. Okay, I figured as much, uh, alright. I'm just leaving her inside the bar. Okay, sounds good. And then you can move. Where are you moving? Uh, I'll move after the guy, like, toward the door, I guess. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, that brings us up to the top of the, uh, round. The food critic suddenly stops moving. Terran, suddenly you are zapped. The lightning zap passes to you. And you feel your face in particular convulsing like bzz, 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 as the lightning seems to be focused on for some reason your face um which hurts a lot uh i need you to make a constitution saving throw for me please zombie hi john yeah and welcome everybody i apologize for those of you just coming back after the little twitch hiccup we had um yeah not so much um, so you are stunned. You're basically sort of stagger backwards. You're stunned. Lightning continues to course through your body. Uh, Rum and Jess, um, you can see all of this, as can you, Lucy, and now that you turn around, as your bard companion is like, ah, this is not the kind of electric guitar solo he wanted to give, I think. Um, as he is, uh, sitting there sort of zapping, and you notice that the lightning seems to be zapping him, particularly in the face, or around the face, for some reason. Is the other guy dead, the food critic? Um, the, he seems to be not moving, yes. And Jess, that now gives us an opportunity for you to move. Just a quick announcement to everyone in chat that I'll be announcing the Esper Genesis second player in just a minute or two, probably after this fight. Uh, go ahead, Jess. And yes, that person looks to be dead. But then, on the other hand, the last guy looked to be dead, and then he stood up and randomly walked out of the inn, so... My thoughts exactly. I want to, um... I can't really do anything about the, the my companion that's being shot, so I'm going to go up to the food critic and I already have my um, my dagger um, pulled out and I'm gonna go up to the um, man and I, I yell, "Is like now don't you move and go on walking." You're pulling out your own dagger. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I still have the bag in my one hand, and right. then I'm just pulling out my own dagger and holding it to the perceived dead man. Yep. I, I'm a little, I'm alarmed, and but Jess always has this composition that she's going to do the next action. She's not going to be phased by something. So okay. she, the one body just went. He, she's ready for the next body to go. <laughs> just line them up, knock them down. Okay. Um, all right, so you are ready and waiting as you look at this body. Um, Terran, um, you are continuing to be zapped. I'm going to ask you to make another constitution saving throw for me, please. Yeah, not so much. Um, you are zapped for 
four points of damage. Taryn, you can't really function at the moment. Um, your body is convulsing um, with this energy, and as I say, it's focused around your face. And you really don't have a lot of, unfortunately, control at the moment. If and when you can make a saving throw, we'll talk more about it, but at the moment, you're just kind of like, like that type of thing. Um, okay. So I can't really ask you what you want to do, because what you're doing right now is being shocked. <laughs> um Rum, uh, you are up next. Um, what do you want to do? You see your companion, as I say, being zapped. Now I, I saw the guy move out of the room. He's still in the. He's still outside. Correct? Yes, correct. Um, Seems to be just standing there. Just standing there in the street. In the street. I'm gonna move out towards him. Okay. Um, get out the door first. Now, how is he? Just standing there, like kind of like all like almost like zombified almost yeah, yes or... hands at a side just sort of waiting for something um okay one second i'm going to th uh use another cantrip okay uh I'll use Thom again. Okay. And create tremor, the harmless tremors in the ground around him specifically to see if that kind of takes him out of a daze almost. Okay. Uh, okay. That's fair enough. So you do that um, and it just seems to have absolutely zero effect on him at all. He just okay. is just doing whatever he's doing. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so that is you at the moment. And then last we have um, Lucian. So um, Lucian, I believe we had you ready to move, um, having dropped the dwarf. What are you going to do at this point? Um, do I see the other guy out the door? Uh, you see the other guy outside. Well, you don't see the other guy in the street. You see that your companion rum has gone out to the street towards where the previously dead guy went. You see, you definitely saw that. And you also see your friend, uh, the food critic, lying on the ground, apparently dead, and your friend Terran being zapped repeatedly. And Jess looking over the body of the food critic being like, don't you move, basically. <laughs> don't do it. Stay I'm dead. Not prepared. Yeah. Um, is my javelin made out of metal? Uh, certainly the speed, the head of it would be, for sure. The head of it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was planning to make a ground. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it would have a wood handle, probably, which wouldn't necessarily conduct, although it could conduct. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, you, you might be able to do that. What do you have in mind? Well, my initial thought was, I was gonna use my sword, and pierce the ground as close to the uh, the convulsing guy as possible so okay. that the electricity would bounce to the metal and go straight down to the ground instead. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I okay. I think I'm going to do that. All right, so you plunge the sword into the ground um, next to the uh, convulsing guy. Who, well, actually, the guy at the ground, I should say... The, oh, the currently convulsing guy, as in your friend Terran, in other words. Um, well... Because the guy on the ground is not convulsing anymore. He's not moving. Um, oh, the, the electricity is bounced onto... The uh, electricity Terran? bounced to Terran, specifically to Terran's face. Oh, okay, so... Uh, yeah, I can still do that, right? Sure, if you want, you can yeah. you can do that, yeah. So you, yeah, let's see if that works. If you put the sword down next to him... Um, without touching him, just near him, right? Next to him, yes. I assume? Yeah, yes. it does. You do that, um, but it doesn't seem to have any effect on the electricity. It seems to be focused around him and the area of his face, specifically. Okay. Um, and so you can think a little bit about what that the implications of that are. I assume you're staying movement-wise where you are, Lucian? Well, I'm near Terra now, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, before we get back to Jess, the food critic now stands up in front of you, Jess, seeming to pay no attention, and do it. eyes closed. Now, it, it, wa it seems to be walking past you, unless you're going to do something, just was, looks like it's going to walk past you out to the street. Uh, with my opportunity, I want to stab it. Okay, go ahead and attack then. Uh, 
that would be uh, plus five. So that's you nonstop, I think. <laughs> or anybody that wants to roll it. But nonstop's been rolling in the 20s. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't actually hit him. Um, <laughs> you, you swing at this guy, but you actually miss him. Um, and he, without apparently taking notice of your attack at all, just literally walks out the street. Uh, walks out into the street and stands next to the guy who was already out there and just stands there, hands it aside, apparently waiting for something. We're all gonna get killed by this thing. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so Jess, now that that, it's now actually your turn, so now what do you want to do? That was reacting to what he did. Yeah. Um, What's up, BMC? Yes, it is through roll 20. I'm pulling, I'm, okay, so th I just watched two bodies go out the door and I see this guy as, uh, our, my friend is getting shocked. It has to be something with either this dagger or this spot or the bottle that broke. And so I'm opening up the bag. I'm looking in it and kind of trying to make a sense of these two items. Okay. Um, One of the items definitely is not functional at all. The broken glass, whatever that was holding this thing is completely destroyed. There's shards all over the bag. Um, you could maybe glue it together given four weeks and a hell of a lot of patience, um, but there's no way it's coming back together now. The tooth um, is in pretty good shape. I mean, tooth seems fine um, and still seems warm to the touch and also still seems to be, from what you can tell, pulsing a little bit. Again, in time with the rhythm of this, because I remember I mentioned the lightning's like bzz, 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 right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to grab it. Okay. And pull it out of the bag. Okay, you do so. Nothing happens, but you have it now. Okay, a tune, a tune. No. Um, <laughs> is there anything that is written on the actual tooth? Not, no, it doesn't look like it. it. Seems to be very, just a blank tooth. Um, and is our friend anywhere to be found that hired us to do this? Uh, that's a good question. So looking around um, the inn, you actually do see, um, the heck was his name? Burrell, that's right. You do see Burrell, um, who is actually standing uh, near the bar. A lot of the people have already cleared out. The bartender is kind of cowering somewhere not behind the bar, looking around the edge of it. And you actually see Burrell, and Burrell is pointing yelling something at you. For some reason, you can't hear what he's saying. The sound of the buzzing is really loud. The electricity is zapping your friend. But he's pointing, he seems to be pointing at Terran's face. And he's yelling something at you, but you can't make out what it is. I'm going... So, I'm following with my companion and what he did with his um, spear. And I'm going to put it up towards... Well, actually, crap. I apologize. Uh, I'm going to... I'm not tall enough to reach his face, am I? Uh, you might be able to be if you jumped. Yeah, you might be able to be. You're not, you're not, you know, one foot three. I mean, you could probably do that, yeah. Okay, I'm Unless Terran to... is like seven feet, but I don't think he is. I'm, I'm pretty sure Terran is... I'm gonna say I'm like five six. Yeah, sure you are. <laughs> oh, I'm four nine. I perhaps you didn't know. <laughs> you might be bending over. Yeah, right. Exactly. Sure. So I'm gonna attempt to standing tall, the... singing show tunes. I love a parade. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and thinking that is my the mindset of justice. That she's like, okay, oh, he's pointing towards his face. My companion has already done the spear thing. Maybe it's the dagger that they need to actually conduct the lightning, and so I, I jump it up to his face and see if, what happens. Okay. Um, so, now, are you touching the face? Or are you, like, just putting it near his face? Like, what are you what are you doing with it? Sure. So, I'm going to um, essentially hit him, but not stab him with it. Okay. So, sort of bang him in the face with this. Okay. So, you uh, jump up. Go ahead and make a dexterity check for me. Let's see how graceful you are in this process. It's a plus three. I do have acrobatics. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take acrobatics. And that would be plus five, I believe. 
That I think at least, yeah. By probably plus five. Is it plus five? It is plus five. Okay, so you jump up and um, bop uh, your friend in the face, um, and zap. <laughs> What are the what are the five electricity you say to the face? Zap! Um, you take uh, another point of damage, um, and uh, Terran staggers back a little bit, um, and then uh, sort of like sways backwards and forwards. Terran, I need you to make another Constitution saving throw for me, please. Oh. Four. Okay. Um, you are zapped, Terran, for six points of damage. How are you doing hit point wise? That will put me at zero. Okay. So, Terran, you stumble forward, poof, like basically face plant, um, and lie still on the ground. Allegedly, apparently, for the rest of you, unconscious. We'll see what actually is the case. Um, and you still see this sort of electricity arcing through him. Um, Rum. Uh, I assume the two... Uh, humans are out front still, just standing there. That is what they're doing. Yep. Well, one of them is actually a half elf, the food critic. But yeah, the two the two people are standing out front. Yep. Um. I'm gonna pull out my holy symbol and use turn on dead to see if they actually are in an undead state and okay. see if they'll actually run away. Uh, okay, so you do that, um, speaking a prayer to your god, uh, but they don't seem to take any account or notice of this. Um, and this would certainly be, although it's an in, it's a reasonable idea, but it would be a weird undead, um, if you had encountered it this way. But there's something animating them, um, if they're actually dead or alive is unclear. I can still do a movement right afterwards. Yes, yes you can. Um, I will move back in to the building. Where you see Terran face planted. Yes, exactly. Okay. And just move towards him. Got it. Uh, Lucian, you're up. You see, as I said, uh, Terran face planted. I think trying to think of the order of business I should be doing. Um, I'm, I was thinking of doing Lay on Hands on Terran. Okay. You can try to do that if you like. Okay, I'll do that. Alright. Um, when you reach down and touch him, um, you are zapped. Although his body uh, still, because his body still has this energy, as I mentioned, through him, um, you take just a single point of damage. Um, but he is kind of just <clears throat> still convulsing a little bit on the ground. Um, you can try to heal him, though. Uh, so you can use your Lay on Hands to see how much uh, damage that will heal. It heals five. Okay. So go ahead and give yourself five points, um, Terran. However, Terran does not regain consciousness. I'll tell you what Terran does in a minute. Um, okay. Uh, back up. Actually, I'll tell you what he does right now. Um, at the beginning of this round, two things happen. First of all, the lightning shoots over to the wild elf that I mentioned before, who was sort of standing up and staggering back towards the door. This is the one who had the bow. Um, it shoots towards, and uh, for this one, I guess I want Rum and Jess uh, and Lucian to all make uh, perception checks for me, please. See if you can see where the lightning zaps to. Perception is uh, wisdom. Yeah. Yes, perception would be wisdom. Yep. Yeah. Okay, twenty-one. All right. You're gonna have a pretty good guess, Rum. <laughs> so, Lucy, you're just like, what? What thing? Lightning? I don't. Uh, there's, there's something <laughs> wrong. The light has blinded me. I'm too busy. I'm too busy yeah. with my hands. Yeah, exactly. You're always too concerned about that. Exactly. Uh, okay, and then Jess, what did you? What do you need nonstop to roll? Plus five. Plus five again. Everything I do is plus five. Everything is pretty much plus five. Okay. Um, so uh, Lucian and Jess, neither of you see this, but Rum, you you certainly do. The lightning specifically hits the bow first, 
and then spreads over the rest of the elf's body. But it hits the bow and looks specifically the bow string. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. Just the entire bow first, but then it spreads to her entire body. So just to review, it hit Terran. Well, it hit the first guy that had the thing. Then it jumped to the food critic. Then it jumped to Terran's face. And then it jumped to the bow and obviously is now affecting the elf who's holding the bow. Um, okay, just so to keep that in mind. Uh, and Jess, that leads us to you. You did not see that, so, however. You just were like, there was all of a sudden, you know, the elf is being zapped. I was distracted by Borellis. I assume that I'm closer to him now than yes. I can hear him. Yes. Um, Borellis is yelling something about the lightning. Look about, look where the lightning, look where the lightning is. Um, the problem is that the elf is also really close to you, so the bzz, 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 bzz is still really loud too. But you hear something about the lightning. Look about, look at the lightning. Something about the lightning, and where the lightning is hitting something. The lightning. I have no clue. <laughs> You are throwing me through a loop with this one. Hmm. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, like, I have done my job. My, my job uh, is done. Here. I. Can I use my investigation to <laughs> have a character that is smarter than me right now? Um, in regards to. Looking at the surmising what has happened with the last two bodies, where it's been jumping, what he is, Borales is saying, and the thing that happened with that now this person is being shot. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'll allow you to make, um, yeah, go ahead and make an investigation check. Um, and we'll see if you can think about the targeting for a minute. So go ahead and make an investigation check, or, or tell nonstop what you need to make for an investigation <laughs> plus check. Plus four, please, if you don't mind. Plus four? Yes. I saw it! It was on it was, it was, for just a minute. Um, you're kind of like, uh, it's zapping people in order? The tooth doesn't seem to be like there's it goes one at a time but you don't you don't really have a discernible obvious pattern beyond that um but i mean you know uh burn keeps yelling at you about the lightning something or burl rather keeps yelling at you about the lightning and the importance of the lightning for whatever that's worth Yeah, I'm going to have to... I'm going to... I don't know what's happening, so I'm going to my friend that's on the, the ground. I'm going to kind of lean over. I was like, are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so as you lean over, Taryn quite suddenly sits up, almost bashes your head in the process, <laughs> stands up, eyes closed, and walks directly out of the inn. And uh, Taryn, you have literally no knowledge. Of, you're just like... you. You're just... I know this has not been a fascinating few rounds for you, I'm afraid, but you just literally walk straight out um, and uh, stand next to the other two in the street. I Eyes joined, closed, waiting. I join the drum circle outside. You join the drone circle. Yep. Um, and Rum, that leads us to you. We're all gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so the bow... Yes. ...is... I saw the lightning hit the bow yep. as a whole, and then it started to light up the elf, right? It was right. an elf. But yeah, that's well, correct. No. But it started with the bow. It started with the bow. I mean, the light started, hit, it hit the bow first, and like specifically seemed to hit that. Okay. Does the wild elf seem stunned, like as in they're, they're stuck in place? Yes. Or is they, yes. They, so they have no control. Okay. Yes. Um,. Okay, I am going to attempt another call shot. Okay. With my secondary hand axe. Okay. 
At the bow specifically. At the bow, okay. Just to see if I can knock it out of the hands, because that's the first heart. That's what I was saying. It, because of my perception check, I saw where the lightning hit, right. and I just want to make sure that uh, bow has been removed from the weapon, or from the hands at this point. Okay, you can try to do that if you want. Uh, okay. This will probably be at a negative two. The bow's a little bit of a bigger target, but okay. Yeah, sorry, Shadow. I wasn't. I I wasn't ignoring that. I was just trying to focus on this. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Uh, okay, so we're talking basically 14. Um, so uh, it it bangs into the bow, but it does not dislodge the bow. Um, the hand sort of is holding onto this bow as it continues to, you know, convulse over and over again. And so the bow is not knocked loose. It might have been jarred for a second, but it doesn't, it's not actually um, jarred loose. Now um yeah, go ahead. Does my axe go flying off in any direction because of the fact that there's lightning, or no. does it just drop? No, which is seems odd to you. It hits the bow and just like slams to the ground. It just falls to the ground. Okay. Yep. In fact, um, this, and one thing that uh, that you notice about that is that this does not seem to be acting like normal electricity that's that's controlled by metal, you know, and is necessarily corresponding to metal. The bow, first of all, is wood, all wood. Um, and your axe is metal, but it seems to make no difference if you've got metal, wood, whatever. Um, this is not acting like normal electricity. Okay, I will um, move towards the wild elf in prep for next round. Okay, uh, that's going to lead us to Lucian. Um, so, so the weapon couldn't be off the well wasn't knocked loose when when rum tried uh hit it but wasn't able to jar it loose no um that was a long shot i was gonna do i was gonna do divine sense but i'm not sure that was a good idea um No, I have a water skin. Can I just throw water at it? At the lightning? At the lightning. If you want. I would like to throw water at lightning. Okay. <laughs> that is a statement that should be used more often. I would like to throw water at lightning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, sure. Uh, go ahead and chuck it. Um, make a dexterity, um, uh, basically a ranged attack. So a basic ranged attack. And let's see how well you do with hitting with this thing. Okay. Um, so your uh, your water skin like slams into the elf, and uh, the water drips down and seems to do absolutely nothing whatsoever to either the other than just dripping down the elf. Either it does not affect the elf, nor does it affect the lightning around the elf. Um, so you can now move if you like. I would like to move towards the door and, and, and try to block it. Okay. Um, all right. You do so. Uh, at the beginning of the next round, before you go, Jess, um, the person that is, you know, being zapped, the elf, sort of falls over, lies on the ground, and the lightning then shoots out the door. Uh, sorry, the window. Shoots out the window, I beg your pardon. Shoots out the window. And you hear a small little scream right outside. I run, I run over to Baralis. I'm like, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> okay. And um, <laughs> Burrell points out, he's like, are you daft? Don't you see what it's hitting? And he, like, tells you, basically, like, you know, yells at you to follow him, and he goes booking it out of the inn. I do so. Okay. So as you book it out of the inn, he uh, and you get out the door, he looks, he says... I, that's what I thought. Look! And you see that the person who's now convulsing 
is a small, uh, looks like possibly a dwarven girl um, who is wearing a necklace um, made of some kind of flower. And he points it and he says, you see what that is? And he seems to be pointing at the dwarven girl. A necklace you're referring to? Not just a necklace, you daft sod. I'm talking about a look at the kind of necklace. You see the flowers on it? Now you can make a nature check if you want to see if you remember what these flowers are. We spec we write the town, yeah. The next six hours is just the lightning zapping and destroying every person in Flan. Defiance in Flan, also known as the end of Flan. If you have a nature check. If not, I'll take um, intelligence. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah. Intelligence, yes. Nature I'll take, otherwise just intelligence. Okay, so I have intelligence is set plus two. Okay, so just make a roll then uh, nonstop, please, with plus two. Oh, 20. Yeah, you know what those are. You've seen them before. Those are safflowers. And you know that safflowers typically come, at least around here, only from the Quivering Forest, which is to the north of Flan. And so, you know, basically Burrell says, Dude, so? You get it? No, he's still here. I see you. I just had to log back in. Um, I got dropped out. Okay. Um, I so did you hear what I said? Uh, uh, make a nature or an intelligence test. Yeah, he did that, and you got a twenty. Um, he did that for you, so you got a twenty. <laughs> so he so, said, uh, he said, yeah, I know exactly what it is. You know exactly what it is. These are safflowers. The necklace is made of safflowers, and you know that safflowers only come from the quivering forest, which is just to the north of Flan. And he says, now do you get it? Burrell says. Like, oh. <laughs> because you clearly get it. Automatically. Totally. Um, he says, he sighs and he says, I'll oh, just think for a minute. Do you have that tooth? I I hold it out. And he, so he, he kind of snatches it away and he says, look. The one who had the bag, right? He's got this tooth. Now, where did it go next? The lightning, I mean. To the... The cook. The, the critic. Right. And he says, what... He's like, in the critic. And then it went to your friend. Do you see what was on your friend's face? Now, you may remember what was on Terry's face. Suit. Aye. And you know what it was made of? No. Safflowers. So he says, no. you know, safflowers, safflowers. He's pointing at the dwarf girl. Safflowers. It's all from the quivering forest. Now, which, who around here has got something from the quivering forest? And he starts, like, looking around frantically, um, basically around the general area. You can do the same thing if you wish. It's evening, but some of the, it's not late evening, so some of the merchants are still kind of, like, you know, starting to put together their stalls and basically close up for the night. So there's still a fair bit of uh, merchants and people around. Wait, wouldn't the cook have some more in it? Maybe. In the end? I would assume. So I run back to the cook area. Okay. Um, Alright, you book back in. Um, Taryn is still, unfortunately, I'm sorry, Taryn is still standing there. Um, <laughs> Rum, um, okay, Rum, you see Jess booking it in, yelling something about safflowers. I, I'll assume that I'll share the information that I just learned. Okay, as you <laughs> so you yell something about safflowers. Didn't you see the safflowers? Okay, um, think here. And, I'm, and I see him running towards inside the building, back in towards... Like the kitchen, was, basically, yeah. The kitchen. Okay. Um, I will run towards... Uh, 
No. Cause, would I have heard the conversation outside? No. No? Okay. Not likely. Not likely. Um, okay, I will continue. I'll run with him. Okay. And ask him what he's looking for specifically and why. Okay. Um, and Jess is able to pretty much convey um, Burrell thinks we need to get Safflower. Um, we need to have Safflower with one of with one of us, the person with the tooth, basically says. Um, so that's that's basically what it is. And actually, Rum, if you're running with him, you could actually grab the soup slightly before Jess could, if you wanted to do that. Okay, but I I wouldn't know the soup had it right because I wasn't nearby when that happened. Right. Oh, but you would know. That's true. You wouldn't know that, but you would know. I mean, assuming Jess yelled that it's to go get soup. Then you would pretty much like that. Okay. You know what that is. These guys don't have a lot of different choices. Okay, no worries. Um, okay, so I will go towards that table okay. uh, and grab the soup. Okay. And I will actually take my dwarven mug, which should be empty now. Right. And I'll pour it into that mug <laughs> and then bring it towards him. Okay, so we got a mug of safflower soup. I love it. Uh, yeah. Okay, Lucian, um, what are you going to do? You've actually heard these two yelling at each other about safflower, and then you just see soup being poured into a mug. It is conceivable that your that your comrades have all lost their minds. That is possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is way before we started doing this. Yeah, yeah, this is right. That happened before simultaneous insanity. Um, <laughs> I, I I suppose that when they're done pouring, I would grab the mug and run outside and be the decoy. Okay, now are you just grabbing the mug and only the mug? Um, well, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna grab my sword too I'll, I'll yell if i uh if he's trying to grab it's like you need this with it you can grab the yeah so he jess is holding up the tooth and you can grab it from her if you wish lucy okay I'll, I'll grab i'll grab the mug and the and the tooth okay and then you go booking out there now right. as you book out um several things happen at once um you get out as you get out, um, let me see, who was the last person that was on the ground? Um, the, uh, I guess actually all three people are standing outside. Okay. So the lightning zaps from the dwarven girl who like falls onto her knees, but not unconscious. The lightning flies to you, Lucian, and then flies around and around you like whirl, 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 and then gets drawn into the tooth. Like into the tooth. And then there's this boom sound, and you feel this like like rumble of power in the area. And simultaneous to that, all of the three um, people that are in the street that were standing there, including Taryn, just fall over. Um, Taryn, you feel a lot of pain. Like something hits you hard in the back of the head, and you wake up and you're like, what am I doing on the street? Like, ow, you know, um, you're on the back of the street. Um, and uh, next to you are two other people, including the original human. And now there is just silence as you see um, people sort of standing around, staring down at you. And Burrell comes running over and says, Ah, thank the gods. I didn't think we were going to get to them in time. And um, he uh, sort of leans down. He looks to all of you, including you, um, and uh, Taryn says, uh, are you all right? Yeah, a little woozy. Um, <laughs> I didn't do anything horribly embarrassing, did I? He says, well, and he kind of looks over at, uh, at Jess and Rum, who are now walking up next to you and kind of like, and Lucien is like, it's, uh, it's kind of a long story. I'll let your friends tell it, I guess. Um, and um, he, uh, he said, but actually, your face was part of a clue that helped me, so thank you. And he gets up, um, you know, he actually pats you once on the face for some reason, and then uh, then stands up. Um, and he walks over to see to the dwarven girl, um, who seems to be okay. And you notice that the two people next to you are also kind of moving sort of groggily also, including the original um human, the uh, person who originally had this sack that Jess is now holding and he's kind of moving around a little bit as well. So you guys can act if you wish. You're alive! I thought you had died. I thought all of you had died. Why are you all still moving? 
that thing almost killed us. And uh, the the human says, uh, "What what thing?" Uh, oh, and um, he looks and he sees Lucy and that you're still holding the tooth, and he says, "Ah, that thing. Where did you get that?" Uh, you had it in your pouch. And he says, "I." D-, and then he kind of like as if he's sort of like his eyes widen as if he's just remembered. He's like, "Ah." Damnation. Yes. Yes, it's true. I I just bought that tooth. It has been more problem than worth so far. From who? Well, from a traveling merchant. There was a why I met in the forest up there, the quivering forest. And he showed me that you could use the tooth. It's a tooth from a blue dragon, he said. He said it could be used to heat and work metal more easily than in a forge. Well, I'm an iron worker, and I thought... I could use this, sell it to the Iron Workers Guild, make some pretty coin on it. Certainly didn't expect we were going to get anything like whatever this is. And Burrell sort of has his uh, arms folded and looks down and says, And it didn't occur to you to wonder why someone was giving you a blue dragon tooth? And the uh, other of the human says, No, I just thought I could make a little bit of money, perhaps. Hmm, a very little bit, maybe. Burrell says, sort of staring down. He does not look pleased. He says, The reality is, looking at all of you, I can't leave this tooth in the hands of other people. It's far too dangerous. At least Emerald Enclave ought to be able to explore it and see it for themselves. And um, so he says, I want to thank you for helping. Some of you did it more directly than others, but all of it made a difference. He said, In some cases, I got clued in based upon things that happened. So I'm willing to reward you for your part in this. Perhaps a hundred gold each would be of a suitable reward. hundred gold for, you know, first level characters. Not too bad, by the way. Um, and he says, But I would ask that you give me that tooth. This thing needs to be taken away and put into safekeeping and certainly not sold to any iron workers guild. And he looks back down at the guy who kind of shrugs and looks away. Hey, he was just trying to make a living and a lifestyle. Don't blame him for that. He had a legitimate purchase here. He's not the villain. He, and he looks down at you. He says, with all respect, rogue, I think that legitimate is the real question here. A purchase? Yes. A legal one? He knows the circumstances around purchasing magic creatures, body parts, especially dragons. Well... I think we can all agree the real villain here is Saffron Oil. (laughs) (laughs) And he says, he says, he says, exactly. And the food critic's like, I quite agree. If this isn't just another example of how Safflower Oil is the worst conceivable, you know, and he begins to like launch into this (laughs) lecture about it. And uh, coming around behind you, Taryn says, oh, my dear, are you all right? Oh, no. And and, uh, you see Esma and Eve sort of leaning down and kind of, you know, giving you a hug. And, oh, my dear, when we saw you hurt, we knew we were in trouble, didn't we, uh, Eve? Oh, yes, Esma. It was a very difficult time for all of us. Well, I would have gone over there myself if I had any idea. But then you went over and you were zapping with electricity and then your face was covered in soup and that was confusing. And um, and so they're both sort of talking to each other. Um, at this point, they seem to be more talking to each other about how they were upset than you about how you were actually upset. But um, And uh, so Burrell's arm still folded. He says, look, you seem like reasonable folks, but I appeal to you. This tooth should not be left with others. We need to bring this back to an organization that can handle it. Let the Emerald Enclave deal with it. They're in the forest all the time. We know about blue dragons. And, uh... Well, I'll I'll, I'll hand him the tooth, and I'll also say, like... Here's your tooth. But I'm hoping that... The Lord's Alliance would have a joint investigation with this... And he, uh, he sort of sh- he nods his head. He says, I think perhaps that could be arranged. And a generous act for a generous act. And he pulls out a um, pouch uh, from, from, sorry, from a pouch. He grabs uh, a small vial. And he says, I think some of you may have taken some damage, specifically you. And he hands this to you, Terran. He says, that potion should see you right. It's a potion of healing. And I think you'll all probably need it. 
And now, and he turns and sort of glares at the uh, the iron worker person, the person who's going to sell to the iron worker. And then he looks around everybody else. He says, "It's uh, I think time for me to be heading to bed myself. My head hurts, and I don't think I'm the only one." And then he looks back at all of you. He says, "But thank you. And uh, if you stay around Flan, I'd ask you to keep an eye on some of these guilds." If this one is any indication, he says, looking down at the uh, merchant, he says, I think they're going to need to be kept on a shorter leash. As he walks away, I want all four of you to make uh, one perception check for me, please. Uh, plus five for me. One less plus five for you, nonstop. <laughs> In addition to your own. I'll, I'll do yours first. <laughs> okay, so Terran clearly is not recovered from his harrowing experience. That's you know, uh, Ron has got an eight. Enamored by the ladies. Yep, you're just sort of like Terran. You're like, oh my god, what is this? Like, I don't even know what's happened in my life. Um, okay, Lucy, and that was for Jess. Yes. Okay, so that's just wisdom, right? Yes. Let's see what yours is, and then Rum will talk about yours. I was sitting on that twenty. Um, yeah, so neither Jess nor Lucian see anything, but you sure do, Rum, because as you're walking away, as uh, Borel is walking away, you see the merchant on the ground, the guy who originally had the tooth, sit up and give Borel the most murderous, you know, look of hatred that you could possibly imagine, and you think to yourself, this is not a normal reaction, Unless there are some issues that the Merchant Guild needs to deal with. And I think it is at that point, gentlemen, that we will bring this adventure to a close. The shock in Evenfest. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. I, I feel bad, a little bad for um, Stump. Although Stump, Stump, actually, you had a lot of stuff at the beginning. It's just that in the middle, you got, <laughs> you got, you face planted. Um, yeah. I had three bad rolls. Yeah, it, three bad rolls in a row. It's generally gonna be it's generally gonna be bad. Um, yeah, the key was basically that idea that was connected to the saffron. That whole thing about the saffron being uh, from Quivering Forest meant that as the sort of uh, energy was going to zap anybody that had been close to the forest at some point. So Rum, part of that clue is when it hit that bow, the bow was also from, you didn't have a chance to actually talk to her, but if you had, you would have found that she was a ranger from the Quivering Forest and that she hung out there too. Not that the bow was made of safflower oil, but that the bow was, you know, like, from the forest. And so basically that's what it was doing. It was jumping from person to person. And the only way it could be contained is if the person had safflower oil, but also had a tooth, the tooth, so that it could basically, like, be sucked into the tooth, like, essentially like a receptacle for it. Um, so yeah. So, um, that was basically the idea behind it. But as I said, not much combat, but there was definitely... Actually, there was some combat because you guys were knocking everybody out and like, <laughs> making called shots and stuff. So, <laughs> there, was, uh, there was more than I was actually expecting, which was cool. Um, but, uh, but thank you guys. That was fun. And um, Chad, I'm going to announce the Esper Genesis thing in a minute, but I'm going to let these guys go first, but not before asking uh, each of them again to sort of say to everybody where they're going to be. Um, thank you for sticking with this, Jay, despite uh, the remote access and all that stuff. But I think it worked out reasonably well, thanks to nonstop making all your dice rolls for you. Um, where will the fine people uh, here on the internet see you next, or what do you want to, what do you want to uh, talk about uh, in terms of game-related stuff or whatever the case may be? Um, you can just find me at Impact a Game, and... Uh, just keep an eye out on that and to see if I post any previews of new games. We have a n new game coming out, uh, Dungeons of Tal'Doria, um, and going to be showing a preview of that very, very soon. Cool. Very, very cool. Um, you will see more from Jay in other contexts, by the way, connected to this channel very soon. Things will be revealed. But uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, fun times that I enjoyed uh, watching Jess sort of maneuver. <laughs> Hitting the extra table leg was particularly fun, I think. Um, but it was good times. Uh, that and the jumping up, like trying to hit the dad in the face thing with the tooth was also amusing. But but good stuff. Um, Rum, uh, good stuff today, Raider. Uh, it was fun to see, uh, to see how Rum was actually going to operate with things. I liked some of the ideas that you were coming up with in terms of sort of like 
you know, taking in the whole room and everything. Um, and you sometimes made the roles and stuff, but sometimes it was just a matter of not necessarily being able to put two and two together because everything was going on at once. So it was, you know, yeah. it was an interesting, uh, it was interesting to kind of watch things do, but still a lot of fun. So thank you. Where will the people see you next? Uh, here so, um, obviously by day I smash my head against my keyboard because I work in IT, so you won't see me. <laughs> Um, but at night, um, bouncing anywhere between uh, GC Darkside Rob, uh, yourself, Arv, um, and just basically doing my own gaming and uh, working on my training. So not too much in the streaming thing right now because of the life things with uh, obviously being in IT, but uh, definitely uh, check me out uh, once in a while. I do pop online, uh, Twitch TV, Miss Raider. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you for having me out. It's been a long time since I've had to actually do uh, any d and I'm just trying to get into it actually with some work colleagues as well. So cool. Uh, definitely good to kind of uh, work the charm, not do the whole uh, attack thing all the time. Actually kind of uh, working with the uh, crowd and seeing what's going on, those non-combat actions. Yeah. That's it's fun. It's one of the things that I thought was kind of cool about this adventure when I read it. But I was like, I was like, well, you know, I wasn't sure how it was going to go over since you know it was a little bit different. But I, it was kind of fun seeing people operate in a non-combat environment. So good stuff, man. Thank you. It was good to have you on, uh, Stump. Again, I it was a lot of fun to have you as well. But I and I'm the opening sections were a lot of fun for me to watch you work with uh, Esma and Eve and all that stuff. I love the uh, giving the flowers and the dancing suggestions and all that was really cool stuff. I just feel bad that you then face planted and then got zapped by lightning repeatedly <laughs> um as the way that worked but i hope you had fun nonetheless and uh where will the people see you next sir i did i had a lot of fun i really enjoyed it um they will be able to find me hanging in your chat or on your discord or generally in like i said earlier encounter role plays chat good people encounter role play yep um it, we will definitely look forward to that, seeing that thank you stump and as i mentioned uh the cd is on its way to you um God, so it's, i look forward to getting that it is on its way so thank you very much again for the support etc it was good to have you on tonight and last but certainly not least of course uh non-stop non uh long time viewer thank you for uh for hanging with us despite uh, not having the cam uh and making multiple roles for you and for jess but i uh, hope you had a good time and we had some uh, good consistent paladin moments uh, I like the idea that everyone else was being like real, like, well, let me talk about this. And then you're just kind of like, look, you, that, and you and Taryn did this both, but you were more just like, look, I need an artifact. So <laughs> it's just like, it's just like straight to the point. It was very funny. It was very paladin related. Um, so where will the fine people see you next, Nan? Um, well, I'm, I'm pretty much on Twitch every day. Uh, I, I'm either on GOG or your channel or watching a bunch of speedrunners um, doing some events for charity or for getting money to a charitable event to raise charity <laughs> yes a lot <laughs> of charity like that. yeah a lot of charity um and i'm usually either playing uh, an rpg or a strategy game while i'm have the stream running around Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, it was fun to actually get. I, I one of the things I like about these sessions is it's fun to be able to get viewers that I've known for a long time and either see what they look like or hear what they sound like or both, and just kind of put names with faces. I always think is fun to do. So um, it was good to do that, and we've had a number of different people on doing this. So cool. Thank you, nonstop and uh, Stumpomatic and Mr. Raider and J Reb. You guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you for playing with us. Chat, can we get some some love for the players uh, tonight? Some Arvini e hypes, etc. And uh, I'm going to announce Esper Genesis in a minute, but I'll let you guys go first. So, gentlemen, thank you, thank you, and I will see you guys tomorrow or later on. Good day. Thank you. Bye, Good night, guys. guys. See ya. Bye. All righty. Good stuff. Huzzah! All righty. Cool, cool, cool. Let's uh, get out of this. I did enjoy that music. Cool stuff. Yeah, the only thing that was bad about that was that I lost my freaking... Uh, the, the thing freaking display driver crashed in the middle of that but otherwise i thought it was good so uh cool all right folks so with that said whoa it's not what i meant to do um with that said that was a lot of fun thank you guys so much thanks again to stumpomatic to nonstop to mr raider and to j rab uh you guys were awesome so thank you thank you it was fun and i hope everyone had fun watching that because i definitely had a lot of fun dming it uh okay so now what we've got is as i switch over my glasses whoop 
It's always a little weird putting on these glasses after the old ones because these other ones are these other ones are basically like mid range reading glasses. And I so because I sit where I sit on my desk, like I'm sitting with a normal desk. So if I don't do that, then I can't read here. And these are good enough for the screen that I can kind of read both. Because if I try to do this, then I just end up having to be like, there's this and there's this. So but it always was a little weird when you put on glasses. Those of you who wear it will know what I mean. And you're like, Ugh, new glasses kind of readjusting. So uh, in any case, um, so yeah, it it. it that's what happens. But as everyone always says, it's better than the alternative. It is definitely better than the alternative. All right. So now with that said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is time for us to make our big announcement. So the Esper Genesis um, game that we are doing again will be on Friday the 23rd. Uh, it will take place at 8 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to talk about the thunderclap for that in just a minute. But we have players, of course, that are playing, four players in all. The first player was announced uh, last, I guess, on... So, I guess it was announced on Tuesday. Yeah, it was announced on Tuesday. And that, of course, is Cat Rambo, fantasy author, president of Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, general all-around cool person, and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so that was what we had for that. But today, we are happy to announce the second player of four. Players number three and four will be announced tomorrow. So today, we are happy to announce player number two. We can have our little drum roll here, I guess we might say. Um... Player number two is going to be, all right, player number two is Louise Moore. Louise Moore, who is also better known as Accidental Legend on Twitch. Um, Louise is also the person who starred in uh, Blades in the Dark 6 and 20. Um, Louise also plays D&D over with Encounter Roleplay. Um, Louise is really, really good. She is a really good role player, and you guys should see the character background that she has written for her character. Her character background is no joke uh, for this game. It is super awesome, uh, and I'm very excited to have her into the mix. I actually had talked to her about the possibility of doing the Tolkien campaign, back in the day, the Adventures of Middle-Earth campaign, but schedule did not work out, but the schedule does work out now, and so the second player joining us is going to be Louise Moore. Again, really, really excellent, um, and so I'm very excited about that. It's going to be super cool. So two of the four have now been revealed. Cat Rambo uh, is the first player that was revealed. Now Louise Moore has been revealed. The remaining two players that are there in silhouette will be revealed tomorrow. I will reveal one towards the beginning of the Infinity and Beyond D&D stream, and I will reveal um, the other person towards the end of the Infinity and Beyond D&D stream. So really looking forward to it. Um, that is for Esper Genesis, which is happening on Friday. So thank you to Louise, thank you to Kat, and thank you to the other two mysterious players who we will reveal tomorrow because that's how we do things. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, let me remind people, speaking of that, about this thunderclap. Now, at last count, we had, um, I believe, 71 people signed up for this, but we need to get 100 people signed up for this. We're still at that 71 number. We really need to get more people signed up for it because that's the way that we're actually going to make this thing work. Again, the thunderclap is a small micro targeted social media marketing thing where basically you sign up for it and then it will tweet or Facebook or Tumblr um, from your account at 7.30 p.m. on Friday, one and only one tweet and you'll see the tweet when you go to the page which just says join us on 22318 first official esper genesis roleplay stream drop a follow for updates hashtag dnd 5e hashtag ttrpg hashtag twitch and then it gives the little um link to uh that page basically and so that is going to be happening um on uh friday at 7 30 p.m eastern and the more people that we have signed up for it, the more reach we can have. Right now, we've got 89,159 people that we reach, which is pretty badass, I think. Um, but the goal, obviously, is we've got to hit that 100 number. So please, if you haven't already done so, please consider supporting by signing up for this. There is no money involved. There's no data mining involved. It's not going to ask you to do a bunch of other tweets. You're not getting signed up for any email lists. It's nothing like that. This is a very reputable, sort of well-known thing. Um, but it would definitely be big help for us if you're able to do that. So if you're able to support the Thunderclap, thank you for the host, Eric. I appreciate that, man. Um, if you're able to do the Thunderclap, uh, that would be much, much appreciated. So thank you, thank you in advance for those of you who have. And if you haven't yet, please consider doing so. That would be awesome. Other thing I want to mention today. Yes, it's true. Uh, that is that is true, Kilobyte. Yep. 
And then the other thing I want to mention too is uh, that we've got the next game coming up. That's going to be happening uh, next week. Uh, I'm going to be not this coming Tuesday, but the week after. Um, so it's actually uh, going to be after Esper Genesis. Right now we've got uh, Tales of Berseria, which is uh, leading Portal 2. Seven votes for Tales of Berseria, five votes for Portal 2, two votes for Toonstruck. So that's what we've got right now. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so definitely get your votes in. That vote will end on Tuesday. And then last but certainly not least, I want to mention to everybody about the ways you can support the stream. Please check out the Arv Shop for merchandise, Infinity and Beyond merchandise, which is happening, of course, tomorrow on Saturday. That's exclamation point Arv Shop. Arv Treon is the Patreon right there, exclamation point Arv Treon, where you can get inspiration for the players. You can support the players. You've got two more Infinity and Beyond streams to do this, plus Esper Genesis. So you've got three more sessions that you'll be able to use your inspirations on if you support at a certain level. So doing that would be much appreciated by yours truly. Um, and so that would be awesome. Plus, you can get cool things for you, cool things for the stream. All that is good stuff. Um, that's the Patreon. You can also, of course, support the Discord, exclamation point. Point Arv Cord will get you over to there. Exclamation point Arv Tweets, I forgot to mention at the beginning, that'll get you over to my Twitter account, which would be great to see you following over there. Uh, exclamation point Arv Tube to my YouTube channel, where you can check out past broadcasts of the stream. And of course, subscribing, that thing that's right above should be over there, I think. Uh, the purple button on your video window. If you can sub to that, that would be awesome, because that again gives me, um, that again is uh, supportive of the channel and sort of demonstrates the support that the channel has to Twitch and things like that. So all of that would be great. Um, we are going to be doing, I think, a raid, but we're not going to do a manual raid this time because it's late and uh, I don't want to have that sort of situation. So we will probably do an automatic raid. I will pick someone to raid and then at the end of the uh, outro, the audio outro, then I will do that automatic raid and we will jump over there um, and give that person some love. As for me, I will be back at you guys tomorrow evening at around 7 p.m. Eastern as we continue. We're really moving into the end game now of the flagship campaign on this channel. I say flagship because it's been playing for almost two years, actually over two years now. So we've been playing it for a long time and that of course is Infinity and Beyond with Tyranny of Dragons, specifically the Rise of Tiamat, as these guys continue to make their way through Xanthal's Tower. So definitely make sure that you check out that, uh, and we will see the information that we have before us as we continue with this really awesome campaign. Um, please make sure to follow all the things. Thank you all so much if you check things out tonight. Please make sure to follow, and all that good stuff, you guys are great. Thank you to my wonderful mods, to Dragonspear, Kilobyte, Shadowed Mage, and Chaotix. Thank you guys, great job tonight. Thank you also to my uh, to my subs, so thank you to Dragonspear, Spirit Kilobyte, Shadowed Mage, uh, Mr. Raider, Nonstop, Rock God, and Uncle Elias. Thank you as well to my Patreon supporters, of which I know Chaotix is one also. Thank you guys all for all of the support. I really appreciate it. Thank you to my viewers. Thank you to Cyborg Sellout. I'm not sure if I've seen you near before, Cyborg. If I have, welcome back. If not, welcome in. I hope you'll consider supporting the channel by following or supporting the Patreon or subbing if you can or checking out the shop. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Cyphus. Thank you to D. Valcion. I don't think I've seen you either, Valcion, but I hope, again, you like what you saw and heard and will support if you can. Thank you to Ekeg. Thank you to GC Darkside Rob, one of the members of Infinity and Beyond, who you'll be hearing more from tomorrow. Thank you to Hand of Code, as always. Thank you to Alari, Mr. Mano. Thank you to... What's up, Mano? Thank you to Poltergeist Zero. Thank you to Shantanos. I don't think I've seen you in here, Shantanos. So again, I hope you will uh, support if you can. Uh, thank you so much for being in here. Thank you to Poltergeist Zero, who I think just showed up. Good to see you, Poltergeist Zero. Thank you to Streep. Thank you to Stumpomatic again. Great job tonight, Stump. Thank you to uh, the Blue Belt. Thank Thank you to you, Christians, and thank you to Zebchi. What's up, Zebchi? And thank you to Znemir. And I don't think I've seen you in here either, Znemir. So I hope you will support in the ways that I mentioned. Thank you all so much. That's going to do it for me. Again, stick around. At the very end, I will do a raid to someone. Um, but now we're going to, that'll be at the end of my audio outro. But now I'm going to head off uh, and head to Betty Bye. And I will see all of you wonderful people uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for more Infinity Beyond and Dungeons and Dragons. Until then, thanks everyone for watching D&D. Please support that thunderclap, and I will catch all of you wonderful people soon. Thanks, everyone. Love you all. Best viewers on Twitch. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for being in the game, Stump. Thanks, everybody. Love you all, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Until then, have a good night. Oh, and be good to each other, too.
true Well, your mind and troubled by the questions in the dark Content to play your part Open pathways to your heart Well, your life untainted by a host of broken dreams When all your acts were queens Understood all that it means Could you have understood the way your life was bound? Did you ever wonder how, how you got from there? Take a day.